we, we lived in a world of angiogenics. Mm -hmm. uh, we live now in a world of PARP. Mm -hmm. We're peeking around the corner for IO. Mm -hmm. The next class of agents is antibody drug conjugates. Mm -hmm. And the leading candidate for antibody drug conjugates is this compound called Mervatuxin absorventansine. Merv. I got the name. I, I've been I've been rehearsing. <laughs> so so I know. It's, I, this, it's the second it's the second word that is a little harder than Mervatuxin. I, I always told my patients you can't get it unless you can pronounce it. <laughs> exactly. So this is a, a medication. Thank you, uh, uh, Mike, for for being so passionate about this. Both of you actually. Mm -hmm. But tell us about the mechanism of action and what this medication is. Mervatuxin absorbentansine. Tell us about it. So it's um, it's really um, I guess I would classify it as a sort of third generation uh, antibody drug conjugate, and I s emphasize that because antibody drug conjugate has been around for a while, but but the the early development of these um, it, there were a lot of false starts, mm -hmm. and now we know that you need the antibody to have a high affinity for the antigen. The antigen needs to be expressed on the cancer cells and not anywhere else. And then you need to deliver a payload that's really high, high potency mm -hmm. uh, because once it gets into the cell and kills the tumor cell, it'll then diffuse to the surrounding tumor cells and, and cause what's known as a bystander effect. So, so MERV is a uh, humanized antibody to the folate receptor alpha, which is really a terrific tumor marker. So it's highly expressed in uh, high-grade uh, serous ovarian cancer, maybe about 60, 70 percent have very high expression, probably close to 100 percent have some expression. And you don't find this um, protein expressed really in any other normal right. tissues, maybe a little bit in the renal tubules. And then that humanized antibody is linked through an important linker that had de was developed over the last couple of years to DM4, which is an anti-tubule agent. Um, so that's, that's what it is, and um, we've now gone through, uh, it went through all the early testing, preclinical testing, and now we're through a fair amount of uh, early drug development trials, which showed a lot of activity with an acceptable toxicity profile. And, and importantly, in that, that a lot amount of activity is in patients who are less heavily pretreated, so that one to three, hence how forward one, the phase three study that's testing this agent against uh, uh, kind of standard of care chemotherapy was built based upon all of that early data. So let, let's be clear. So patient, the drugs are brought to market these days through single arm trials and accelerated approval. Just take Olaparib and Recaparib as an example. Olaparib 137 patients, Recaparib 106. And then you say, well, you can't really do that with MERV because it doesn't work that well in the highest unmet medical need where accelerated approval is an option. Right. So, so now you got to do randomized trial, Correct. which takes time and money yep. and effort, um, and, but at the same time is a little bit more definitive. Yep. So mm -hmm. this forward one trial, tell mm -hmm. us what the eligibility is for forward mm -hmm. one, and, and, and I've tried to explain why that study had to be done, and it is done. Right. It's not reported, yeah. but tell us what it is. So um, along with Mike, Mike just mentioned, it's for patients who have high-grade serous carcinoma. So it's a histology-specific uh, trial. Um, and then through paraffin fixed tissue, uh, testing is done for expression of folate receptor alpha. And it has to be, a, patients have to have a high expression of that as done by an outside testing agency. Um, and then patients were randomized one-to-one. Uh, -one. This was not a uh, blinded trial. Patients knew exactly what you're getting to either mervatuximab alone um, versus... Platinum resistant. Oh, thank you. Very good. Platinum resistant disease, correct. Um, platinum resistant, not platinum sensitive. One to three prior lines, so up to three prior lines, so a less heavily pretreated patient population, um, either Merv alone or kind of a standard chemotherapy, either weekly paclitaxel, doxel, pegylated liposomal doxorubicin, or topo -tecan. Yeah, it's interesting because, as you said, it's open label. So yeah. in many of our studies, we're blinded. But here, and, and I don't know what forward one's going to show, but I think we've all treated patients open label, and we've seen tumors shrink and patients do well. Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited about this result. Forward one will report in next year. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about the toxicity now of, of, of this antibody drug conjugate against the folate receptor. Let me go back to what, something before I mm -hmm. answer that, what you said, because it was a really interesting observation, which is that, um, and I was privy to a lot of the conversations, there, it, there was a lot of discussion in the company to do accelerated approval. And the initial uh, data suggests that um, 
uh, what, what, when, the, when the early studies were fully analyzed, it was just felt that the response rate was not quite robust that's right, enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's no, when we went to the yep. one to three, right, where yeah. the response yep. rate is north of forty-five percent. So I, I, we all remain very optimistic about this. The toxicity profile is interesting. I mean, I, I think it's got the typical ADC toxicities of antibody reactions. There's some. Uh, there's clearly a little free drug that shows up, and so the, so there is some myelosuppression, some abdominal pain, but the novel finding which turns out that in retrospect is not that novel and that it happens with most ADCs, is that the patients can develop an ocular toxicity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I always tell the story because it was sort of my patient that, sh that showed up with this where she called me on a Friday morning after we assumed that she was doing fine and she called me up and said, uh, Dr. Vera, I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm blind. Uh, she wasn't. But but what what happens is that but she they, still couldn't see she couldn't see <laughs> and then she yeah. develop they right. develop these uh, sort of pseudocysts in her yeah. cornea and and it interferes with their vision so they get blurred vision mm -hmm. fully fully reversible mm -hmm. uh, and with um, looking at the PKs we went to a an adjusted ideal body weight which better dosed the drug and now they get lubricating eye drops and steroid eye drops and so. The incidence of, of the ocular toxicity, I think, is about 30%, and it's all grade one, grade two. So I, I don't see it as a big issue for FDA registration. So we, we eagerly await the results of FORWARD-1, a randomized phase three trial in one to three prior regimens, mm -hmm. platinum-resistant, folate receptor high, uh, single-agent mervatuximab sorbentansine versus physician's choice chemotherapy.